How did you get DQ? If I clear your flags, what? Un DQ? Yeah, I just missed the final corner and I was trying to back up to get my run because I want to redo my one run lap and it like DQ'd me instantly. So don't reverse. I wish there was a way you could cut across from turn. I guess it's tech. Welcome, everybody. Race three will be underway here shortly. For those that are making their way in, this is practice for the Shake and Bake Next Gen series at Road America.
4.04 miles is a lap around Road America. 125 miles, 31 laps is the race distance. Drivers definitely have their hand full this afternoon. Looking at the pace setter right now, Shane Therrien. He's ahead of the Daytona race winner, Bronson Stafford. He's part of the crazy finish at Fontana one week ago. Jared Zeigler sits third after a disappointing race for him, where he ended up finishing 27th at Fontana. Logan Brakey is currently sitting fourth in the timesheets. Joey Chapman, Justin Dittrich, Gilberto Javier Gamera, Spencer Hardison jumps his way up to fifth. There is Joey Chapman in a three. Looking down to eighth, that's Gilberto Javier Gamera. Jacob Grant moves up to fifth. So now we're seeing the lap time starting to fall a little bit for those just now getting on track. Jason Cameron Jr. sitting in 10th. Then it's Kevin Young, Austin Jordan, Tanner Johnson, Matt Hummel, Tom Bourne, Trenton Jump, and Christian Gomez on the board. Bourne, Jump, and Gomez have not set a lap time at this moment. There's a look at Hardison, who was temporarily in the top five, however brief that may have been. Pretty slow on the brakes there. Taking it easy on what is an outlap, essentially. I'm going to talk to Logan Brakey here. So, qualify practice is almost done. you got about 10 minutes left before qualifying. Um, I've heard from a couple drivers that were in testing that uh, this car, as far as the brakes feel, not super consistent. Now that you've spent about an hour working on it, how, how confident do you feel in the brakes getting ready for qualifying in the race? Um... You know they're a little spongy i don't think the i think the anticipation for this car for for road courses was that it was going to drive very similar to a gt3 right which yeah. means better brakes than the gen 6 car being able to go deeper in the corners and now I've, i'd say if anything it's you have to brake earlier than a gen 6 car um and you're on the brakes for longer um so that, that, I think, is what's catching a lot of people by surprise. Um, and to be quite honest, I think it's disappointing a lot of people because this car is not living up to the performance expectations that everybody thought it would in terms of braking. I personally think it handles better than a Gen 6 in terms of just outright handling. Um, and I've, I've enjoyed it. I, I've, I've liked running in this car. But I think, I think the, the sponginess of the brakes is what's catching... A lot of people off guard and is so disappointing for a lot of people so you talk about the sponginess of the brakes now you're, you're on the brakes for longer does it feel more unstable under braking or is it just the brakes take longer to actually work no it's i mean when you when you the, the braking the brake force is there when you're on the brakes it's not it's not squirrely i thought i also thought the gen 6 cars were squirrely when you got on the brakes um and you really had to be cautious this it, it feels quite stable when you're braking um so that that that's not an issue it's just it's just the length of time spent on the brakes is is longer than it was in the gen 6 car right. that's interesting um so i guess another thing as some people have complained about the feedback with this car with the mm -hmm. the amount of, of of feedback you're getting from the wheel have you had an issue with that you I mean you're sitting fourth so you're one of the better people at that set lap time so far 
has feedback been an issue for you or have you been able to get around whatever inconsistencies there are on that front yeah but that's not specific to road courses i mean this car has felt light in terms of the feedback to the wheel um everywhere we go in comparison to the gen 6 um there are ways around that obviously adjusting the the steering pinion um makes it a little more stiff that's what i've done i know a lot of others have done that as well um adjust that steering pinion setting in the uh in the garage options um and that's that stiffened it up a little bit made it a little easier required less input in turning um but the lack of the lack of, of feedback from the wheel i think is is has just been an adjustment everywhere not just road courses so you said that this car feels better but it's a little bit worse on the braking what are you expecting lap one? Because I know we got qualifying and then obviously the start of the race. How's lap one going to go for you, knowing that you might be into the front? We'll see in some lap times you're getting the fall here, but it looks like you're pretty safely in the top five or six. How is that race start going to be for you? Yeah, I mean, it's just caution. Um, maybe more so than, than previous. I'm usually pretty cautious um, in anything NASCAR related on a road course. Uh, just so, just because the cars are so much more unpredictable than, than like a GT3 car would be, um, so just just caution going into one. You know, everybody's going to be uneasy, um, and just <laughs> got to make sure. In order to finish first, first you must finish. So, just got to make sure we get through that first lap, maybe the first two laps, and we've got the comp caution on on lap nine coming to ten. So it's going to be the same thing once we restart after that. So. Alrighty, well, there's about five minutes left in practice, and then qualifying starts immediately after that, so I will let you go and get ready for qualifying. Thank you for taking the time to kind of explain what everyone's feeling out there on track. Good luck in the race. Yeah, I appreciate it. Take care. You too. That was Logan Brakey, now sitting sixth on the timesheets. Christian Gomez went fastest with a 212.18. That is three tenths almost. Yeah, that is almost exactly three tenths faster than Shane Therrien, and that is his first lap at speed. So Gomez showing some pace, appreciating Logan Brakey there coming in there and kind of explaining what drivers are going to be feeling during this race. Qualifying starts in less than five minutes. It's Gomez, Therrien, Zeigler, Jump, Stafford, and Brakey top six on the leaderboards. 16 of set lap times. 19 set to appear in this race. The first road course race of the season. See what Gomez sets here. Looks like you'll have about... You have about two more laps, it looks like, looking at the timing. So this lap and then one more before practice ends. If you're enjoying this race live as it happens, feel free to give us a follow. Twitch.com forward slash era broadcast network. If you're watching this race through our YouTube archive, feel free to like and subscribe. All of the support you give to the channel absolutely helps. Gomez is one of the more solidified road course racers on track at the moment. And Gomez comes in the pit lane. He will not run a second lap. Looking down to Jared Zeigler in third place. We can talk about the troubles that he has seen so far this season. Disappointing at Daytona and then having that snap oversteer issue at Fontana that, that took him out of the race early. And a little bit of trouble there. That's some heavy contact to the back of the car. The five is going to come to a stop. That's Jacob Grant, who also encountered a lot of trouble at Fontana. Check up at the final corner. As the 8 pulls it in the pit lane, the 5 gets going again. 
And the five will also come into pit lane. We'll look at Austin Jordan here in 15th in that Red Bull machine. And 28. He has not set an at pace lap. This is a timed lap. He has gone through his outlap already. With less than two minutes left in practice, we'll see what time he can set here. Heard from, from Logan how confidence under braking could be an issue with everyone having to be on the brakes longer than what was expected. We'll see if that affects the 28 at all. Up the hill for the start finish line. How does this lap look? Better by five seconds. That puts him at the 12. Right, right there with Javier Camara. And so far, well ahead of Jason Cameron Jr. Everyone currently sitting in clusters on the timesheets. You got your front few, your front three. You have your mid pack. And you have those that are still trying to adapt to the braking and the processes of the Gen 7 stock car. This is one of the trickier corners. It's downhill, 90 degree corner. A lot of cars, you want to take all that curving, like the 28 did. But in this car, you're bound to wheel spin it, and he's off here. But this lap won't be finished with practice coming to an end here very shortly. Practice is done. It's Christian Gomez at the very top. 112, 182. Set him well and above the rest of the field. We'll see if we can watch him qualify here. While we do that, we'll show you some information here. It's Road America. 4.04 miles, 3.98 if you just take the shortest length around. 103 degrees is the track temperature, 78 is the ambient temperature. Humidity at 59%, partly cloudy. Winds up to 6 miles per hour. Here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. You're seeing the track map there of Road America off to the right side of your screen. At a turn 13, up the hill for Gomez.
Keep an eye on him. His sector one looked really good. Right now he's setting purples. A little bit of latency there for Gomez. Sector 2, 21.5 to a 16.01. His sector times have gone from purple to green. Not sure who else is going faster at the moment. A lot of cars on track. Gomez is the furthest one ahead on track. So we shall see here. When he comes around. Still purple sector 3. 24.9. Just below the 25 second mark. Sector 4 coming up. Also purple. But he is the first one to run. In those sectors. Very tight if you can at a corner. Approaching the last corner now. Got to keep it tidy. Don't use too much of the curbing. He's going to go up the hill now and see what his time places. There will be several that come up in just a moment. Gomez will be first. 17.3 to end the lap. 2.11.4. Fastest lap of the weekend. Eric Stamp puts a 218 on the board. 211.6 by Trenton Jump. That's who was competing for fastest lap. Wow. Joey Chapman is fourth on the board. Now fifth on the board. Logan Brakey with a 212.9. Moves him to third place on the timesheets. Jacob Grants and Matt Hummel have also set lap times. Eight cars have set lap times. Several others on track at the moment. Jared Zeigler up to third in that eight car. 2.12.2 for Zeigler. See what this lap looks like for Gomez. He will be the first to cross the line. Trenton Jump did not go for a second lap. So Jump will stay in second place. Really scrolling on the brakes there. A lot of heavy braking. See if that costs him any. Coming out of the final corner here. See what he's pushing across the line. It's a 2.11.4 to beat. Can he beat it? He does not. 2.12.1. Looks like it was Sector 1 and Sector 4 that cost him a little bit. Take a look at Shane Therian. He's ahead of Logan Brakey, who did not complete his second lap. Joy Chapman moves up to seventh with his second lap. Looking at Therian, seeing if Therian can move into the top three. Getting pretty close to the front of this field.
He improves, but not enough to take third. Really close. Really, really close. Three hundredths keeps him away from the top three. I'm going to take a look at Tom Bourne. His first lap was invalidated for an off track. He's on his second lap now. 11 cars have set validated lap times. Bronson Stafford is completing his first lap as well. We'll actually take a look at that first lap. This lap looks clean. Can he get into the top five with this lap? It was invalidated. It was an invalidated lap time. For the 61, the Daytona race winner and the current points leader. Off track for the 54. And within the final three corners of the lap, he will not set a valid lap time in this session. He'll join Tanner Johnson, Gilberto Javier Gamera, Jason Cameron Jr., Justin Dittrich, and Bennett Allen in that regard. And the same thing for Stafford. A lot of drivers unable to set validated lap times. 12 drivers did. And Christian Gomez was the best of all of them. Twenty cars will take the grid here at Road America. Eight of which could not set a valid lap time under qualifying. This is going to be interesting. Bronson Stafford once again starting from the back of the field. We'll have to make his way forward again. He's got the pace to do it. He was one of the fastest in practice. Let's go over the starting grid. It's Gomez at the front. His first pole of the season. He beat out Trenton Jump by two tenths to do it. Jared Zeigler starts on the inside of row number two, followed by Shane Therrien. Logan Brakey and Jacob Grant make up row number three. Spencer Hardison goes up to seventh place, starts on the inside of row four, alongside Joey Chapman. Matt Hummel and Eric Stamp share row five. Joseph Lester and Austin Jordan make up row number six. Looking down the rest of the order, Justin Dittrich and Tom Bourne make up row seven. Row eight is Bronson Stafford, the current points leader, alongside Kevin Young. Gilberto Javier Gamera, his last name's not showing up on the, the graphic for an unfortunate reason. And Bennett Allen, they make up row 9. Jason Cameron Jr. makes up the last row of the grid alongside Tanner Johnson. Both of which were pretty competitive at Fontana one week ago. We'll see if they can be as competitive again here at Road America. 31 laps, 125 miles lies ahead of these 20 drivers. How are they going to fare? It's Christian Gomez at the front of the field. A lot of pressure on him. He's the first driver outside of the playoff cut line at the moment. A win would lock him in. And with two mid-pace races, including a really bad race at Fontana last week where he got a speeding penalty and went two laps down, we will see... What Gomez can do. Trenton Jump also in search of his first race win of the season. They begin the formation lap four miles. Here at Road America, the track layout's been unchanged since it was created back in the 1950s. 
a lot of familiarity for drivers and fans alike. And it's developed its reputation as one of the classics in American road course racing. It's going to be an interesting start here at Road America. Drivers have all complained about the brakes, and snap oversteer can cause problems if you take too much curbing. Kevin Young elected to start from pit lane. Looks like so did Justin Dittrich. Kevin Young will drop three spots because of it, and Justin Dittrich will drop seven spots because of his pit lane start. So keep an eye as we get ready to go here. Going through the carousel. We go from the carousel to the kink here at turn 11. The lights on your screen will be for when the race goes green. So you'll know when the drivers know. Porsche 911 safety car will pull in off of turn 14. But here they are through Canada Corner, one of the most challenging corners in these cars so far. Up through Thunder Valley and the Bill Mitchell Bend of turn 13. And they have the final corner to go before we get to racing for 125 miles. Pace cars in. It's Gomez, Jump, Zeigler, Therian. We are racing at Road America. You see the pit lane starters forgetting the roll now. As they take turn one. Very squirrely, but it looks like... No, the eight! Turns across the 46. And it is Bedlam in turn one and two. The yellow's out. Caution is out. Multiple cars taken out of this one. There is a fast repair. They do have a fast repair that they can use. That nine car has no steering. Caution's out. It was Gomez, Brakey, and Therian that all got through unscathed. Jacob Grant looks like he avoided the accident as well. So we look down here. There's been an Allen, the 15, the Napa know-how machine. A little bit damaged on the 15 car as he lets Joseph Lester go by. Lester's got some damage. Looking there at Bourne, 
Looks like his car is largely unscathed. He was far enough back that he could probably check up and avoid most of it. He's up to 7th because of it. The 53 of Eric Stamp. Not so fortunate. We'll take a we'll get a replay here in just a moment. Austin Jordan sitting in ninth there. That's the 28 car. I think he's letting cars by. Yeah, because there's Chapman and Stafford going by him. A lot of cars damaged in a turn one melee. It looked like the 8 and the 46 ran out of space. It looks like they might have been three wide exiting turn one. And it narrows after turn one. It narrows down to kind of feed everyone through turn two. Turns one, two, and three really close together. So there's the 28 of Austin Jordan sitting 11th right now. There's Chapman. Everyone coming into pit lane. Lester's in pit lane. A lot of drivers staying out. Not an insignificant amount of damage there on the 53. The 54 is clean. Off track there for the 15. And there is damage on the front end of that car. See the pit lane counter at the bottom of your screen. Looks like there is another accident here. That is Jared Zeigler. We'll take a look at it here in a moment. So we'll go back to where it started here. So this is kind of where it all began. See if I can get a better look at it. Take another look here. Just take a look at the initial start here. We're focusing on the eight car. It was on the inside. Oh, a little bit of snap oversteer. And that's just really rough. He battled a lot of snap oversteer there, and it cost him pretty dearly. Go on board here. See if we can go on board with them. Right on board with Bennett Allen. As he gets through this accident, relatively unscathed, he's got a little bit of damage on the left front of that machine. You see, where did that damage come from? 
That's where it came from. The nine car still spinning. Otherwise, amazing avoidance there. And that's why he gained so many positions. So this is on board with Gomez, who has just come out of pit lane. We'll cycle through the cameras here real quick. All right. So Gomez has left the lead. It's Shane Therrien now at the front of the field. It's Therrien, Grant, Bourne, Hummel, Brakey, Allen, Jordan, Gomez, Johnson, Stamp, Stafford, Dittrich, Young, Chapman, and Lester all on the lead lap. There is uh, Javier Gamera as well. Trenton Jump and Jerry Zeigler also the last car is on the lead lap. Jason Cameron Jr., one lap down. Spencer Hardison has not yet completed a lap. Looks like both those cars are out of this race. So we'll rack them up and do it again. Lights are off on the pace car. Which means you're going green at the end of this lap. Two by two by two. Matt Hummel in that 93 missing an entire front assembly. Let's see if we can get a good look at that. Yeah, that 93 is missing the entire front end. We'll have to keep an eye on how this restart goes. 18 cars still in it. Pace car makes the hard right. Up the hill we go. And we are back to racing here at Road America. We'll see how this goes. And yeah, the 93 just got left behind. And he's been turned, he's been turned, he's been turned. Watch out, watch out. Are we going to get another yellow? I don't believe we will. Tanner Johnson caught up in it. Everyone is running. There wasn't the track blockage that there was the first lap, which is why the caution initially came out. Everyone is back and rolling. Hummel there in the 93. Eric Stamp got through unscathed. Everyone else relatively okay. And that's awesome. Jordan, a massive lockup for the 28. Further back, the 72 gave him the spot. Saw him lock up. Probably heard him lock up. And just abandoned that corner. 28 still got damage on that car. There's Justin Dittrich in the 21 Pinsoil machine.
right on board with him a little bit there. He sits 13th. That's where he was initially supposed to start before he pit lane started. So he's net zero. He, he's net. He's net neutral here as far as as far as all that goes. And that's the 15 who has warped out of the way, spinning out of the carousel. We'll take a look here. And he just warped out. I don't think there's any damage on that car, but he warped back. Race leader is Shane Therrien. It's Therrien, Gomez, Brakey, Grant, Lester, top five. This is the battle for second. Gomez takes it away from Brakey. Keep an eye on that five car, Logan Grant, right in pursuit. Trenton jump got a little bit sideways there. Matt, uh, Jared Zeigler's crashed again. The A car is once again crashed. Wait to see if we can find out where he's at. There is the eight car. And here's why. Side by side with 61 of Bronson Stafford. Too much curbing. A little bit of a tag there from what was the 46. A little bit of damage there. A little bit of an assist from the tires to get spun back around. And back going again. Struggling there for the 8 car. He had a lot of pace. He's just all falling apart for that 8 car. In a rapid amount of time. Gomez has gotten clear of Brakey and Grant for second place. Ethereum and Gomez both looking for their first wins of the season. I'm trying to get themselves cemented into the next gen playoffs before the holiday break. So there's Gomez coming up the hill. Gaps down below four seconds. See what he can do. Breaking and Grant still battling for third. Bronson and Stafford up to fifth. The points leader. Keep an eye on it. This battle for third is one of the best battles we've got going on right now. Really wide entry for the five. As he tries to chase down the 29. And there's the 61. Stafford has slid. Avoids being hit. Maybe. Yeah, the 94. Cut it really close. Javier Gamera. Cut it super close. But everyone gets rolling again. There's a slow down penalty there for the 94 that he's serving. That's why he's so slow and off the racing line. He's trying to give up that time that he gained by going around on the outside. Looks like he's cleared it. That's turn five. Turn five was was rough. It, it is one of I think it is the toughest corner here at Road America. And it definitely caught Bronson Stafford out. Lost four spots there alone on that. As to go back to Therrien and in the front of the field, he's lost a lot of time to Gomez. Shaved off half a second this lap alone.
Good look at Gomez here. Gaps down below three. Gomez has the pace. He's got the fastest lap so far. It was a 111, 211, 9. Does he best that lap time? He does not, but he just still goes over a second faster than Therian. Gomez on the charge. We're looking at Gomez here. It's highlighted in gold on the timing board. Five cars out. Hummel, Lester, Allen, Cameron, and Hardison out of this race. 15 still running. And all 15 still on the lead lap. Battle for third still ongoing here. Ricky and Grant almost inseparable so far. As Grant's going to look to the inside, then he's going to move back to the outside. Tanner Johnson's gone off track, and that is the final corner for the 23. He will not come to pit lane. That is trouble for the 15 of Tanner Johnson. Johnson entered the day just above the playoff cut line. On 11th points and points. 11th place points, excuse me. He's likely going to drop out of the top 12 at this moment. Look at Gomez as he closes that gap down even further. 2.1 and counting. Keep an eye here. Less than two seconds now is the gap. Battle between these two regarding the race leads down really quick. The 38 almost lost it in turn five. Kevin Young has crashed, it looks like. At least that's what it's telling us on the monitor here. Car 72. He is still ahead of Tanner Johnson at the moment. As we watch this battle for the race lead. Mostly the battle for first here. Breaky for comparison is in third. As they go through the carousel. Get ready to dive through the kink here. Before going their way around. The 38's wide. This is Gomez's opportunity here. The 38's pushing way too hard. And Gomez takes the lead away. And takes it well clear of Canada Corner. New leader, once again, the pole sitter, Christian Gomez. Back to the front of the field. Through the Bill Mitchell bend and into the final corner before going on to the main straightaway here. The 38's pushing really hard. 38 also has not pit yet in this race. Gomez pit under that caution period. Darian stayed out and assumed the race lead for a brief period of time. As Gomez... Begins his 
attempt to break away from Therian. A couple of really costly mistakes that last lap for Therian has given Gomez the lead. Here's a look at Logan Brakier in the third place. And Jacob Grant still in close pursuit. Trenton Jump started third in this race. He's down to fifth. Excuse me, Trenton Jump started second in this race. My apologies. Jump is currently fifth place here. He is less than a second. He's less than four seconds behind Jacob Grant. Grant is just less than a second behind Brakey. It block up there for the five. Still got a little bit better turn there than than Brakey. Right on board here again through the Canada corner for Jacob Grant. Trenton Jump is on the charge. Jacob Grant is another one of those drivers that did not pit under the yellow. It was Therian Grant and Tom Bourne who did not pit. Those three drivers are the only ones that have not yet pit so far in this race as we approach lap 10. Gomez across the line now. Start lap 10. He's already put 1.7 seconds on Shane Therian. Breaking Grant again, unseparable. We're looking through the timing sheet here. It looks like Javier Gamera and Austin Jordan are really close as well. Keep an eye on this battle too. All 15 cars still running are on the lead lap. Eight comes in. Jared Zeigler's in the pit lane. This is the battle for ninth, tenth, and eleventh right now. Tom Bourne in front. Alberto Javier Gamera in tenth in that 94 machine. And Austin Jordan in eleventh. Zeigler will drop down to thirteenth here. Still pretty safe. Unless he's repairing damage, he's still going to be safe from Young and Johnson. But down out of the top 10. Take another look here at third place. He's opened up a gap to the 5, who just went off again. Now he's under threat from Tread and Jump. Jacob Grant. Running wide, running wide. Almost clip of grass there. And Jump takes fourth away. Good pass for Trenton Jump, but a lap of mistakes for Jacob Grant gave it away. Those tires are beginning to give away a little bit for that five car. And I think it's, it's doing the same thing for Therian and for Tom Bourne. Three point eight now between Gomez and Therian. Therian's still faster than Brakey at the moment, sitting in second place. Gomez had a bad lap, still faster than Therian by all, by two seconds. Trenton jump also faster than Therian. Bronson Stafford in the sixty one in sixth place was the only other car faster than. Shane Therian, center of your screen. We're on lap 11 of 31. It's 4.2 and counting between Gomez and Therian. Now 
neither of these top two have won a race this season. Daytona was won by Bronson Stafford, who is still the points leader. Brockton Packard won his first career race at Fontana last week in a photo finish. Won for the ages. Gomez entered this race 13th in points. Darian entered this race 6th in points. Big momentum shift if this continues on for Christian Gomez. Logan Brakey also as well in third entered this race 15th in points. This is going to be the race that flips the points upside down a little bit. The top five is full of people that have not been in the top ten in points for the most part. Shantarian, the only exception here. Looking, for Jacob Grant is 22nd in points entering today. So that, yeah, Therian's the only driver in the top 12 right now. That is a big deal. Therian comes into pit lane. Stafford had a moment. He went off track and came back on relatively cleanly. Still in sixth place. Eric Stamp struggling as well. That's down in 12th place. Zeigler is back and running. They've done some repairs to that number 8 machine. Darian will drop the 4th here pretty easily. Drop the 5th there behind Jacob Grant. Stafford will see where Stafford's at. He's crossing the start-finish line now. And he will also get past Darian. She looks like Therian should slot in between Stafford and there and, and Chapman here. Yep, there is Therian back on track in sixth place on fresh tires. See if Gomez responds at all. And Gomez is off the track. That's before the carousel. That looked like it was out of turn six. What happened? Oh, he just dropped it. Yeah, he dropped it on the curbing out of six. Didn't touch the wall. But he dropped it on the curbing. Believe he was approaching the... Yeah, he's approaching the 23 at Tanner Johnson. Wow. So the race leader spins it out a little bit. Seeing no damage on that 48. But a really close call for the race leader. One reap removed from what would have been a, a really good battle for him. Ruined by a pit speeding penalty. Gomez trying really hard, trying to stay in the zone. He'll come in for tires here. He will respond, but did that incident at a turn six cost him the race lead? I'm pretty sure he'll be able to get it back, but he may get jumped here by Therian on this pit cycle. We'll see how it all looks. Breaky will lead a lap here, it looks like. He did not lead across the line. Gomez did. But we'll see if Brakey stays out and tries to lead a lap. Jump and Grant both came in the pit lane. Stafford stays out. And then Therry will stay out. He's going to move up to third. Therry is going to easily jump Gomez here. They are still putting right sides on Gomez's car, so Gomez will lose a lot of time to Therry. We'll have to claw all that back once again. A rough call there. For Gomez. Puts him in fourth place.
There's Gomez in fourth. Tom Bourne up to fifth. The damage on that 54 car on that left side. Whew, that has been rough. Yeah, Chapman just out of pit lane. I believe he just came out of pit lane. No, he did not. He had a spin, and you see the damage from that spin. Then there's Austin Jordan in the 28. Trenton Jump down to down to eighth. Roberto Javier Gamera in ninth place in 94. Justin Dittrich in tenth place in that 21 machine, having himself a quiet. A quiet afternoon, Dittrich started in the 13th position. At least that's where he qualified. Took a pit lane start. Might have been for the best. As it's now put him in the top 10. Grant in 11th in the 5 machine. There's Zeigler. There's an accident there. Tom Bourne. Tom Bourne, hard spin, and it looks like that's contact damage after the kink. Eric Stamp as well. That is, that is entering the kink, I believe. No, that's turn six. Turn six for, for Eric Stamp. But a lot of damage on that 53 car. A lot of cars coming in. Chapman, Javier Gamera, Bourne, Dittrich, all in. 29, trying to take it a little bit easy here. Breaky has not pit since lap 2. Therian pit on lap 11. Gomez on lap 12. Stafford also on lap 2. They'll have to come in here soon. As a 23 of Tanner Johnson behind. One Officially one lap down. Kevin Young with some damage on that 72 car as well. And there's Eric Stamp. Vitrich in pit lane, making his way out. There's Tom Bourne. Javier Gamera, Chapman. Zeigler has moved his way up to 8th place. Good effort for him after an unfortunate first lap accident. And that's trouble for the 8 again. Out of turn 6. Another trouble area. Turn 6 has proven to be more problematic than Canada Corner and turn 1. A little bit of damage there on the 8 car. We can see it on the front end. But he'll keep rolling. Still an 8th. As the 5 battles with the 28 of Austin Jordan. Jacob Grant goes through. That is for 6th place. This, is, this battle for 6 is pretty... Intense at the moment. Gomez is coming up on Stafford as well. That will be for third. We'll cover that in a second. Gomez gets it. That's the battle for third that we just missed. We'll go back and, and catch that. That was through turn one. And there is a little bit of damage on that, third, on that 48 now. Did they make contact? Oh, yeah, they did. A little bit of door slamming there for the 48 and the 61. But that's how it got done. The 48 now in third. So Gomez is up to third. Now he gets to chase down Therian, who is 4.4 ahead. He's got to get past Tanner Johnson as well, the lap car. Hoping that more unfortunate things happen to everyone else. 
Darien's closing the gap to Brakey, who has been leading a substantial amount. Johnson went off track. Not sure if that was voluntary or not. Back on track in front of the 61. But he gets out of the way. And it is 18 seconds between Stafford and Trenton Jump. Almost 19 seconds. But Stafford is not pit for tires yet. Neither has Logan Brakey, the race leader. Seventy-two is going to come in the pit lane. It's going to hold up the twenty-nine. Both of them come into pit lane. And what could have been a very efficient stop for Brakey has now cost him time as he stops right behind the 72 of Kevin Young. Therian goes by. It takes the race lead. Gomez in second. Again, that gap about four seconds. Stafford comes in as well. Trenton jump. Out of the final corner. We'll take third place away, it looks like. Pretty easily. The best lap belongs to Christian Gomez. It's a 2 11 3. However, the top three are the fastest three. Therian and Jump have the second and third fastest times. Therian and Jump, their fastest times are separated by four hundredths of a second. Jump has second fastest lap. Therian has the third fastest lap. Brakey comes back out fourth ahead of Jacob Grant. Once again, it's Brakey and Grant, however, not as close on track anymore. Grant has had issues. We see him coming now into turn three. Stafford in sixth on fresh tires. See how quick we can get those tires warmed up. A little bit of damage there on that 61 as well from when him and the 48 made contact. The Zeigler up to 7th. Started 3rd in this race. He's lost 4 spots, but it could have been a whole lot worse. Chapman started 8th. He's sitting 8th. Tom Bourne's up 5 spots, up to 9th. Looks like he has used a quick repair to get that car... Back to looking like new. Javier Gamera sitting in 10th. Been a little bit of a struggle for him. But he's up 7 spots. Ditchwich is up 2. And he's not far behind the 94 of, Gamera, of Javier Gamera. Can Ditchwich get into the top 10 here? Big question. We'll see if he can. At least one pit stop left in this race, potentially. I don't believe anyone can make it from where they pit. Stafford pit on 15. You'd have to go 17 laps to make it to the end, and I don't believe he can. Austin Jordan down to 12. Eric Stamp, a lot of damage on that car. But he's still on the lead lap. Kevin Young's off track again. That is, I believe, the final corner. That is the final corner. That is turn 14. He'll keep it going, and he will keep going. He will not stop in pit lane. Johnson uses a fast repair. It looks like, at least. He is a lap down, but comes out ahead of Kevin Young. Thanks to Young's adventure off track in the final corner. There's Stamp going through turn 13.
And here are the race leaders, Therian and Gomez. This is the battle for the lead that we're watching unfold. Down 1.28 seconds. See how this goes. You see how much quicker Gomez has been compared to Trent and Jump. This is what it looks like between Therian and Gomez. Gap has shrunk pretty substantially. Keep an eye on this. Everyone's got one more pit stop left in this race. Is this how the battle for the lead at the end of this race is going to look? Darian's been able to stay with Gomez either through mistakes from Gomez or through just consistency on the behalf of Therian. Austin Jordan has had a moment. It looks like he has crashed. And he has moved out of the way. And he is out of this race. We're down to 14. Keeping an eye on the battle for the lead here. Less than a second. Less than three tenths. Is a move coming into turn five? The Moraine sweep going down to turn five. Gomez to the inside. Is he going to send it? He's there. Side by side. Locks up the brakes and a contact. Gomez lets him have it. Sportsmanship there from Gomez. He almost got it cleared. Made contact. He let Therian have it back. Good sportsmanship there from Gomez. He'll try it again. Some battle wounds there in the 38. Now both sides of the 48. Darian pushing really hard. He knows that Gomez is faster. He's got to know that Gomez is faster at this point. He's closed up so much time. So many times. I think this is the third time he's closed up a gap on Darian. Through the kink. Darian's going to take a defensive line. Gomez backs off a little bit here. He's not going to try it through Canada Corner. Very tidy. 48 gets a little squirrely on exit. Saves it. 38 opens up a little bit more. And that there is significant damage on that 48 on that right side. Is more damage on that 48 than what there were on the 38.
Skinner Johnson's in pit lane once again. I believe this is the third stop. Gomez is pushing really hard, trying to get past Arian. Jump in third. Jump has a 10-second lead over Logan Brakey, but Brakey's got the fresher tires. Brakey and Stafford pit on lap 15. The top three pit on lap 12 or earlier. Everyone still has a pit stop remaining in this race. Through turn 5 again. Once more with feeling. Lap 20 of 31. Gomez was not close enough to make an attempt at Therian that time. We'll see if that makes a, a big difference here. Gomez might have started burning up his stuff. See how much that damage affects him as well. Could be pretty rough going there for Gomez. He's close again. That's through Canada Corner. I have a feeling within the next lap we're going to see something happen. Possibly third turn one. Gomez right there on the 38 Ethereum. The 38 spins it a little bit. And he comes in. You can make it from here. So Gomez in the race lead at 72, that's 53, sorry. Kevin uh, of Eric Stamp that was off track. Kevin Young still going, Tanner Johnson still in pit lane. See what we can get here out of Christian Gomez. He's on his own now. He's got clean air. Can he make anything happen on those older tires? Or is he going to have to respond once again to Therian? Zagler's in pit lane as well. That is the eight car rolling in the pit lane. There's Chapman going by. Sagan will also get passed by the 54 of Tom Bourne. Then there's Dittrich and Alberto, or Gilberto Javier Gomez. Javier Gamora is going to... They're going to stay behind Zeigler, who is now in turn two and three. There's your onboard of Zeigler. As he tries to stay out and ahead. That's ninth place for him at the moment. Gomez is in. Jump is in second place here. We'll see when he comes in. He also put, he said he put the same lap as Gomez. We'll see if he stays out any longer. He will stay out a lap. Trenton jump wants a lap led here. 
The gap between him and Breaky has reduced. It was. Breaky's come in. See if Breaky's going for an undercut here. This is a battle for a podium between Jump and Breaky. There's Therian. He will retake the lead from Gomez. But now it's a race to the finish. There's Stafford getting past Breaky. Stafford has to pit. Jump has to pit. As far as the top five is concerned. There is Breaky exiting pit lane now. He'll drop the sixth. He'll have to get past Jacob Grant again. Grant has not pit as well. Take a look at pit laps here. You'll see when everyone's come in. It'll be pretty important here. Therian's already close to jump. Eight seconds separates the top three. Because there's Gomez in third place right there. For everyone tuning in, we are down, coming to nine laps to go here at Road America. It's the Wisconsin 125 for the Shake and Bake Next Gen Series. Looking at Christian Gomez, the pole sitter of this race and the person with the fastest lap. He's chasing down the man right there in front of him, just off the screen now, Shane Therian. Less than seven seconds separates the top three. Jump has to pit still. So does Bronson Stafford, your points leader. Jacob Grant also has to pit. Logan Brakey has already made his pit stop, his final pit stop of the day, as far as planned pit stops go. Joey Chapman needs to pit as well. Then you have Tom Bourne, Justin Dittrich, and Alberto Javier Gamora. All need to make one more stop. 20 cars started, 13 still running. It's been a very attrition-filled race, at least the beginning was. A huge lap one crash. Used up many of the drivers' quick repair early. Running on board with Gomez as he tries to chase down the 38 Ethereum. Second and third in your screen there for a moment. Top three all right here as they go through the carousel. Race leader Trenton jump and that 46. And it's the 38 Therian. Therian should be able to get past the 46 here within the next lap or so, at least according to the math. Within a second. Tom Bourne's gotten past Justin Dittrich. Looks like that was a pit lane thing. Yeah, that's in pit lane. Bourne and Dittrich pit together, and they were really close together. Javier Gamera's also in pit lane now. It's jumping Therian. We're going to see, sit with Therian as they approach turn one, side by side, and that's three wide. Holy cow. I believe that was the 94. It was the 94 of Javier Gamora. The 72 also pulled off to the side to let everyone through. 
threading the needle there. Shane Therrien made it happen, and there's Dittrich. Justin Dittrich off track. Three-person battle here at the front of the field. Therrien and Gomez, one, two, jump in third. Jump has not made a pit stop yet. We are just about at the one second mark between Therrien and Gomez. Therrien set a new best lap of 211.88. Gomez is still faster, 211.33 as far as fastest laps are concerned. He almost beat it with his last lap, a 211.39. Gomez is flying. Jumps out of the battle for the top for the top positions here. It's Therian and Gomez at the front of this race on lap 2431. They have been going at it all race long. We're coming to seven laps to go. For everyone just tuning in, this is the Shake and Bake Next Gen Series broadcast from Road America. And we're watching a crazy battle for the lead. Gomez and Second Therian in the race lead, 38 and 48. Going at it, out of the final corner. Gomez has the draft. Therian's going to try to defend. Two Ford Mustangs going out at the front of the field, going into turn one. Seven to go. Gomez has the advantage entering turn one. What you don't want to do now is overdrive it. That attempt through for the race lead a lot cleaner than the first attempt. Quick repair was used by Gomez to fix the damage from their last scuffle. Which was going into turn five, which we'll be approaching now. Gomez trying to walk away with this one at the very end. Jumps in pit lane. He'll lose third to Logan Brakey, I believe. Brakey's across the start-finish line now. And he will pass Trenton Jump. Will Stafford get fourth? It's going to be difficult. Looks like he might. He will. Stafford up to fourth. Trying to maintain the points lead. He will do so with relative ease if he finishes where he is right now. Zeigler. Zeigler's had hit his pit stop. Imagine if Zeigler can recover for a top five finish. That's the goal that he has. Trenton Jump looks really good. Just off cycle and he's going to drop down to sixth here. But well ahead of Joey Chapman in seventh. Gomez at the front of the field has opened up a 1.6 second gap over Therian. Breaking in third, Stafford fourth. Looks like Jacob Grant is out of this race. Kevin Young will take 12th place away here in a moment. Dittrich up to 9th. Bourne in 8th. Last car one. Last car in league lap is Tom Bourne. Justin Dittrich, first car one lap down. Gilberto Javier Gamora is also one lap down. Same with Eric Stamp. Kevin Young will be two laps down here. But he should be able to take 12th away from Jacob Grant. Six to go. 2.6 is the gap between Gomez and Darian. It has not been straightforward there for Christian Gomez. But he's where he wants to be, where he wants to be there. And that's the front of the field. Darian's closed. It looks like a... Almost throws a tenth off, but 
Gomez has a way better turn 5, 6, and 7 than Therian. And it shows on the timing screen. Down the, up to 2.7. See what it's like when they come across the kink here. That's the next sector line. Briefly touched three seconds there through the carousel. It is over three seconds now. The gap has definitely broke open. Look at Breaky here. Breaky trying to keep his six second gap to the points leader, Bronson Stafford. Logan Brakey here in third place. Gap is closed down a little bit there between Brakey and Stafford. It's 5.2 between the two Canadian drivers. Ricky trying to stay ahead. Stafford had a mess up here. It was turn one, then he went off track. Chapman in pit lane. No, he's not. He just had an, a lag issue there. We blinked on our end here for a second. Chapman's still in seventh. There he is. Just far away from where all of our focus was at. But there's Chapman sitting in the seventh position. He's up a spot from where he's qualified. Dittrich up five. This is Justin Dittrich in the eighth position. Javier Gamora in ninth. A little bit of damage down that 94. He's had an off track excursion. But he's up eight spots. Eric Stamp just behind in tenth place. Trying to get out of the way here. Maybe. No, he's battling with Tom Bourne's position here. This is a battle for a position. This is 10th and 11th. Bourne's missing the rear of his car. Stamp's missing the, the engine cover. Battle for 10th. Right in front of us. Tom Bourne is right there, right on his tail. Gap at the front of the field has opened up a little bit. It's almost look at the front of the field here. It's our end. It is five point eight. There's been an incident by Shane Therian. He's struggling now. He's trying to see because we saw 3.8 on one monitor and 5.8 on the other. But Shane Therian has had an incident. It hasn't popped up as an incident on our tracker. So we can't go back and look to see what it was. At least not this instant. But he has dropped more than two seconds this lap to the race leader. 
Logan Brakey still sitting in third place, now with a comfortable 6.5 second gap to Bronson Stafford. There's Stafford in the background. Stafford's up 11 spots. Didn't set a good qualifying lap. Had to work his way from the back of the field yet again. Like what he did at Fontana last week. But he's done so. He's sitting fourth. Dittrich has gone off track it looks like. But that's in eighth place. He quickly came back on track. Brakey is losing time there to Stafford. He's down to 5.8 between Brakey and Stafford here. We'll show the the intervals here. We're coming down to the last couple laps of this race. We're three laps to go at the moment. The three is letting Gomez by. That is in turn five. It's Gomez, Therian, Brakey, Stafford, Zeigler, top five. Zeigler with one incredible drive to come from the back of the field after being wrecked on lap one. To get back into the top five. For Christian Gomez, it's just an incredible spirited drive. Fastest all throughout the day. Had to chase down Shane Therrien twice. And right now he's sitting really well. He's coming out of the carousel at this point now. Before he goes towards the kink of turn 11. Gomez opened up an 8.6 second gap on Therian. Therian's just done a really good job of keeping that car clean. One of the few people to have not been in an accident so far today. But he has not had the long run pace of Gomez at all. Two to go. Here at Road America. Alberto Javier Gamora has wrecked and gotten out of the way. And looks like he is out of this race. The 94 has retired at the end of this race. He'll stand a threat of being passed by... Kevin Young at the end here, so he might still lose a spot. But his race comes to an end two laps early. For Gomez, it's a little over a lap and a half before first race win of the season comes his way. It's been a challenging race for all of the drivers so far for a fair variety of different reasons. We'll talk to the drivers that we can get to interview after this race. We'll interview the podium finishers, and we'll see if we can get a couple others in for interviews as well in our post-race coverage here from Wisconsin. the carousel and through the kink now for the penultimate time. Eric Stamp is in pit lane. Young gets past Javier Gamora. Javier Gamora sits in 12th place. 
at the end of this race. Eric stamps back out of pit lane. And Kevin Young up to 11th. Eric Stamp in 10th. Tom Bourne ninth, Justin Dittrich in eighth, and Joey Chapman in seventh at the moment. Coming to the white flag, one lap to go here at Road America. It's Christian Gomez by 10.8 over Shane Therrien. Four miles from Pater. For Florida's Christian Gomez. There's Shane Therrien. He's done so well to keep that car clean. Just, again, not the pace that he would have hoped to try to keep up with Gomez here. Logan Brakey still coming to the white flag. Kind of tells how quick Gomez has been all race long. To put almost a lap, uh, almost a, a minute between him and third place. He is lapped up to sixth place. Trenton Jump is the last car on the lead lap. But Brakey takes the white flag. He's got a nine-second gap between himself and Bronson Stafford, who will exit this race with the points lead still. Right now, it's all eyes on Christian Gomez. He's on the back half of this four-mile track now. Through the kink. Coming down the Canada corner for the final time. Three corners to go. For the 48 Ford Mustang of Christian Gomez. Canada corner taken fine. Through turn 13. Rounding turn 14 and heading for home now. From the struggles of Fontana to the riches of Road America, Christian Gomez is a race winner at Road America. With that win, he's locked himself into the next-gen playoffs. There's Shane Therrien crossing the line in second place. 10.5 behind Christian Gomez. Joey Chapman finishes as well. He's finished his seventh place. The first car one lap down. Justin Dittrich finishes eighth. He crosses the line as well. A big shakeup in the points happening. As Gomez locks himself into the playoffs, Therrien holds on to second, Stafford holds on to fourth, and Brakey gets a podium. His first podium of the season coming for the 29 car as he crosses the line here. Good run there for Logan Brakey in the 29 car. And there's Bronson Stafford in the 61, finishing fourth, up 11 spots. Most of anybody in this race. Jared Zeigler recovers to fifth place. After the lap one accident, he's still wearing the battle scars from. But a top five for that eight car. Not a bad result for that eight car in the slightest. Trenton Jump will finish the field on the lead lap in 6th place. Two cars yet to finish. Well, excuse me, one car yet to finish that is Eric Stamp in the 10th place, number 53. If I can interview him, I'll see if I can ask him if that slogan on the car was in full effect this race. Across the line in 10th place.
But for Christian Gomez, it's race win number one of the season. And a guarantee for the next-gen playoffs here for the Shake and Bake next-gen series. We'll do interviews here in a moment. He's going to burn it down. What a way to do it. What a way to do it. Gomez obviously soaking it all in here. He was extremely frustrated after Road America, after after Fontana last week, with the speeding penalty that took him out of contention, and then a, a crash leader took him completely out of the race. Burning the wheels off of that Ford Mustang as he comes through pit lane as a race winner in the Shake and Bait Next Gen Series. We'll see if we can get an interview from our podium finishers here in just a minute. We're going to start here with Logan Brakey, third place for that 29 machine. Fantastic work in getting back into the top of the field. It wasn't exactly straightforward for anybody this race. But third place for you, you kept it clean when you need to the most. You had a really good pitch strategy. We talked before qualifying. We talked during practice. Now that we've gotten through the race, how difficult was it out there doing the, the 125 miles? I mean, you know, road courses are always tough, but I had a blast in this car. I like as there I was I was, you know, nervous at first, you know, talking to you. I was I was unsure how it was gonna go, you know, with the braking and everything like that, but Man, as we got as we got some green flag laps under our belts, that car just felt like it got better and better, or I got more comfortable and more comfortable. And I just fell in love with that thing. That was the most fun I've had driving us driving a NASCAR Cup car around Road America. That was I had a blast. And to cap it off with the best career road finish uh in a cup car is just fantastic too. So this I'm ecstatic. This is awesome. We needed this. Yeah, I mentioned uh, during the broadcast how a lot of the top five were not in great point standing entering this weekend. And now that completely changes. Gomez goes from 13th to locked into the, the, the next-gen playoffs. You were sitting, I think, 15th, and now you're, you've got a third-place finish out of this, a, a giant point saw where others suffered. Uh, you had an amazing battle with the, the five-car, Jake or Grant, early on. It kind of explain how that was because you had one of the closest battles throughout the race, even as you were trying to like, stay away from Bronson Stafford there at the end. How what fun was it battling with Jacob Grant there early on in that race after the caution? Yeah, you know, Jacob and I kind of have <laughs> we have a weird history. You know, first first uh, season three, he and I kind of were off to a rocky start. He, he we had a few run ins, but over the over the past few seasons, man, he's he's grown into a good friend and I was uh that I I really enjoyed that battle at the start like you were saying I just couldn't get away from him I was pushing as hard as I could and you know there were a couple parts of the track where I'd pull to maybe like seven tenths and then he would reel me back into less than half a second so um I'm really bummed that he wasn't able to finish that so I don't know what happened there but he got off cycle and and I'm, I'm really bummed for him that he wasn't able to to put together a good race because that battle at the start was so much fun well, Nashville is next week. It's the last race before the holiday break. We're kind of getting back to a little bit of normalcy. Do you feel confident with Nashville coming up? Um, yeah, I th yeah, I, I I think so. I I did a uh, I did an official race there when the next gen cars were brand new, and I remember the side draft really being. <laughs> a big factor um so i'm expecting that again but you know that it's it's a bit of an unknown you know these cars are brand new to us and and really so is the track so you put that combination together and i think everybody 
it's kind of a toss up for everybody. Not sure entirely what to expect, but I, I think it's going to be a really good race next week and I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, congrats on your podium. Third place for Logan Brakey in the number 29. Amazing way to cap off a, a, a crazy 31 lap race. Thank Thanks, you. Clayton. Up next, we have Shane Therian, second place. I don't know if you led the most laps or not, but you definitely came close. Amazing battle all race long, back and forth between you, Trenton Jump, and Christian Gomez. You looked really quick out there. Did the car feel quick? Did you feel confident with it? Uh, I did feel confident with it. Um, I knew it wasn't going to beat Gomez, but I'm actually just, you know, confident to be able to race him. He's a hell of a road course racer, so uh, I'm just happy I got to race him. I missed the most laps led by three, but you know, I'll take a second. Um, wish I would have won. I was kind of hoping he would mess up, but man. He's just, he's a really good road course racer. He wasn't going to mess up. So, car was good. I felt confident. It was, it was quick. The brakes could have been better, but other than that, fun. Yeah, you, you near in that, after the last pit stop, you actually set a really good uh, fast lap. You were at 211.8 to his 211.3. You were the only other person in the 211s at all that race, which was really interesting. It was fun to keep track of all of that. Um, and funny enough, he actually made a couple mistakes, which puts you back into the position that you were in where you had to defend. Um, but looking from looking at the start of the race, you gained two spots. You were right behind uh, Jared Zeigler when he spun across the front of uh, Trenton Jump's car. You got away with most of it, and you ended up giving the lead when everyone else kind of pit. How close was that for you in the cockpit of that car? Uh, I I thought I was going to get wrecked because I saw Trenton just like going back and forth with his car because he was still on the gas and mm -hmm. luckily he just spun it away from me. So I don't know. I got unfortunate there and I don't know why uh, Gomez even pit. I knew we couldn't make it on one stop. So I was kind of shocked by that, but he ran me back down. So, I mean, good up to him. But uh, but yeah, I I was kind of holding my breath there on that wreck. I was like, the eight's going to turn himself off of off of Trenton, he's going to turn himself. I was saying it in my Discord, and he, he did. <laughs> well, Nashville next week, I asked this to to Logan a little bit ago. Getting back to a little bit more normal uh, sort of um, environment with these cars being on the ovals. Are you a fan of Nashville? Are you expecting to do well at Nashville and kind of carrying that momentum forward? You were sixth entering the day. You're going to gain some spots in the points after a, a runner-up finish here this evening do you feel confident that you can carry that through the holiday break and get through nashville oh uh, we'll see i mean i don't have any experience in these cars so if it's anything like auto club full throttle i have no idea i've only ran nashville twice um both in the xfinity cars so we'll have to see i have to get some practice in and see uh but no i have zero confidence in this car every time i go to a track so until practice is over, I can't really can't really say how how I'll do. So, well, for someone that doesn't have a lot of confidence, you've done a really good job. You're closing the gap down. You close it down to the the points leader, Bronco Stafford, and you got another podium out of it. So, good luck in Nashville. We'll see you then. A second place finish for the 38 of Shane Therian. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Next up is. The race winner, Christian Gomez. From Christian? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yeah, made, made it a little bit harder for myself, but got to keep entertaining. Yeah, uh, really close calls a couple of times. Caught a couple of those those almost spins for you, especially out of turn six. six. Turn six was a problem area for a lot of people. Don't feel bad about it, but you set blistering pace from in from from the beginning of the race all the way through you chased down shane therian more than once you were the class of the field how how did you get that pace out of that car so consistently when everyone else sort of fell away after like six or seven laps per tire run i think it's just it's just the experience i have with road racing in general um Whenever there's a road course on a schedule for one of these NASCAR leads, I always circle it down because it's it's just it's what I'm good at. 
I might, I'm an okay D old racer. I'll get the good results. I'll be consistent. But road races, those are the races I know I got to step up. And I mean, I started practicing yesterday. I did a few laps, did a few more laps today. And just, just trying to figure out the car because, I don't know, the brakes in this thing, it just then up to scrap. And it, it takes a different style of driving for, for this car at this track right now, currently with the road course configuration. So, uh, yeah, just a little bit of practice and uh, just pretty with experience. Uh, really paid off here, and yeah, just maximizing or just finding a consistent breaking point where I know the brakes will not lock up, and I can maximize the performance out of the brakes because it looks like you got to build up temp. Uh, you got to brake for a long, long time in order to get this car slowed down. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just it's a it's a typical car to drive at the moment. It shouldn't be if that's what they're saying in real life. In fact, this car should be faster than the Gen Six, but. Yeah, hopefully by the time we get to Watkins Glen, I don't know, maybe some patches and stuff could be done here. So not just me, but also everybody else can enjoy driving it because, yeah, it was it was a struggle. It even caught me out, so like you mentioned. I didn't get to talk to you after Fontana with how frustrating that race was. The The speeding penalty threw that race away, uh, unfortunately. So going from Fontana just a week ago to Road America where you're able to lead the most laps and, and win the race, how how much relief does it does that take off your shoulders? Not having to linger on Fontana anymore, as you head into Nashville and the holiday break coming up here after Nashville. Good. Uh, I mean, we still got a little bit of work to do. Got, still got to make get some points here to make sure that we're good from the playoff cutoff. Uh, I think with this win, we should be in, and with the points I earned today, I should be in the bubble now uh, for the playoffs. But. Uh, yeah, it, it does feel good just to have that win, just to know that you know we got the golden ticket already by race three of the season, and we can now just learn, learn the ovals. So, and I think that's that's the most important thing for me right now. Uh, that's kind of like like what I'm struggling with right now, just figuring out this car on the ovals. And now we got enough time to do that. There's enough oval races now, and maybe who knows, maybe get Watkins Glen as well. Add that to the points tallies all well for the playoffs, and it uh, yeah, it just feels really good just to get that win off. Uh, get the bad taste of Fontana out of my mouth and uh, move forward here to Nashville next week and uh, into the holiday break with a win. Well, Christian, you did a fantastic job. Fastest lap, most laps led. You won by over 10 seconds, and you coasted through this, the last part of that last lap. Congratulations on making it into the playoffs. You've clinched your way in. You're well into the top 12 at this point. Congratulations on your race win. You've earned it. You were the class of the field. Good luck next week at Nashville. All right. Thank you. Looks like next up on our interview list here is going to be Bronson Stafford. He is the points leader, and he is the fourth place finisher here at Font at Earn America. Hey, Bronson, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, I got you. Awesome. Fourth place finish. You were trying to chase down Logan there at the end of the race, but you... Remain in the points lead. Shane pulled it in a little bit closer. Fourth place. You said you weren't too awful confident with how this race was looking when we talked at Fontana last week. Best case scenario from Fontana? From from Road America, do you think? Uh, I, could, I think I should have had third. Um, I was involved in the first wreck. I was involved in the wreck right after the caution. I self-spun it like three times, and I still came home fourth and almost caught Brakey, but I cooked the brakes trying to run him down. Um, so honestly, yeah. In all, in all honesty, fourth place I'm, I'm really happy with. I messed up qualifying, started 15th, so kind of put myself in trouble at the beginning. But um, to finish fourth at, honestly, such a long lap and like such a long track and stuff like that, and first road course with this car, like the next-gen car and everything, so not 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 too upset by it at all. Fourth place is a good day. We talked about it before, like, Fontana qualifying wasn't great, Road America qualifying isn't great, and you're still pulling it into the podium places, and you're getting fourth here. What's going to happen when you qualify well, man? What? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've always been more racing than qualifying, even with, um, like, even the old cars. Uh, I actually used to be really good at qualifying as well back on, like, the V6 tire, so, like, what, four or five years ago? I just have never really figured out this tire with doing one or two lap quick laps. Um, every now and then, there's a track that I'm good at kind of thing, like Bristol, for example. I'm usually always good there no matter what, or... 
stuff like that. But um, yeah, don't ever take qualifying speed into like where I might actually run. I'm always better in race trim, like 98% of the time better in race trim. Um, and honestly, I'd rather that. <laughs> What's the point of qualifying? Well, if you finish 10th when you can qualify bad and finish, you know, top five. So yeah, you got you. You got through the lap one accident, I think, because of how far back you were, you were to check out all the way through. Yeah. And obviously that helped. <laughs> um, but, like, man, because we watched your second lap, and it was like you, you got right to the turn five, and, and it messed up there. With natural, yeah. <laughs> with natural coming up, like, yeah, we, we talk about the inconsistencies that this car kind of gives. With Nashville coming up, you talk about Bristol being well for you. Nashville's a bit shorter. It's not a short track, but it's a bit shorter. It drive it. You have to sort of put your elbows out like a short track a little bit. Do you feel like that's one of those tracks you're going to be pretty confident in? I'm pretty sure you said it was going to be one you look forward to at Fontana. But with fourth place now in the books at your first road course event in this car, does that help you at all? Sort of prepare to put your elbows out even more next week. I think I'm a little more comfortable with the car. Like after, you know, anytime you can run 20, I think what we did 27 green flag laps straight this race that ended after the first caution kind of thing. Um, so anytime you can just run green and kind of learn the car more and more, it, it definitely was better. I mean, uh, all race long, I was kind of keeping even with braking and then was able to start running it down because I just felt more confident with braking and with the steering on the car. Uh, I've only done Nashville once. And it was in the Xfinity car so far. So next week's going to be a completely another learning curve. And I think that's what's kind of nice about the opening to this season is, you know, four completely different style tracks with, you know, Daytona being big drafty and Auto Club was drafty too, but in a much different way where you could actually make up or lose time working with people. And then obviously a road course and now, you know, a concrete kind of, intermediate track is going to be very different um so I, I don't know it's going to be interesting it'll be a lot of learning again with practice next week and hopefully can get a decent qualifying start because it's not super fun starting in the back um <laughs> passing cars is fun but it definitely gets a little bit harder when you just run green a lot so so we'll see what happens well congratulations on your fourth place finish you gained 11 spots you're still the points leader um Nashville's next week. Look forward to seeing what magic you can pull off there. Congratulations. Yeah, hopefully it's a good one. Thanks. No problem. That was Bronson Stafford, our fourth place finisher. We got one more interview coming before we end our post race coverage. Okay. Justin Dittrich. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, you got That's it. Right. Cool. Awesome. Eighth place today. You gained five spots. You started from pit lane, I believe. If uh, yeah. I'm mistaken here, was... and it, it one of the best decisions you could have made with how that race started. Walk yeah, we kind of saw the starting grid, and I'm like, it's probably just better to let this go, let let them all go into turn one and sort themselves out. And uh, I think that ended up being the the long play at the end. Just... So eighth place, you, I mean, you end five spots. It's a top ten finish out of road course, which isn't easy. If not the easiest race for you either, definitely a lot of moments where you were struggling, but a top 10 finish to come out of, of Road America, a, a track that caught so many people out so much worse than you. Do, you. do you feel like you could have done a lot differently to try to get maybe seventh from Chapman there at the end? I mean, no, I mean, not really. I mean, I, I, I had one issue where I had to, I had pulled off on the front stretch for, I had to, my my headset was dying. I didn't have any external audio, so I had to blow, I had to let off and uh, get a micro USB into my headset. So I probably lost about no, was it ten seconds? Like yeah, ten seconds up the road. That's probably about what I lost. So, um, you know, it was just that mistakes. I, this is my that was probably my first true road race in any in any of the NASCAR National Series cars. So, you know, I th I think I think seventh was probably the most I could have gotten out of today. Um, but I'm happy with I'm happy with eighth. Well, uh, let's see. Let me look at the points here real quick because you needed a good result like today, and for eighth place, given everything that happened, 
I think that can't be too off the bed. Yeah, you entered the day 26th, but you've gained, I believe that puts you 17th. So you've gained nine spots in points today, I believe, if my math adds up. With Nashville coming in, I'm not sure how much you've done with Nashville, but with, with Nashville coming in a bit more of a, a shorter intermediate track, do you feel like you can kind of build some momentum up with how you did today, even with the, the technical issue you had early on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I'll have a little more time this week to prepare. Um, my karting schedule is kind of dying off a little bit, so uh hopefully uh, you know have a little time to put some laps on the board beforehand because i did not do that this week um and, it, and momentum plays such a big thing even even in i racing series it it just goes such a long way and i'm 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 feeling pretty good going into into nashville considering how this race went um oval, o ovals are kind of more my speed on here anyway so uh hopefully i can at least put up a fight for a top 10 next week. Well, a top eight, a uh, top eight finish here. You were just shy of being on the lead lap there. Um, let me look here. I think yeah, I had one more question for you when I, when I saw you jump into the waiting room here. All right. So what I didn't get to ask you at Fontana, I don't believe you were at Fontana. It, no, you were here. Um, so Nashville's up next in the holiday break, and then we have a few races after the holiday break between Pocono and the All-Star Race. I asked this question to the podium finishers last week. Pocono, Iowa, Kansas, Texas, Watkins, Lip. Did any of those come to your mind as races that you feel like you could really excel at coming in out of the holiday break, going towards the halfway point? Ah. Uh. I th probably I'm probably circling Texas if I'm being honest. I for whatever reason I seem to do pretty okay at the D-shaped ovals. Um, but these guys, you know, mostly Christian Bronson and Shane, they they bring such they they bring the competition to another level at least for me. So I'd have I really got to step up my game if I wanna if I wanna run with those guys, but that's kind of where I'm looking is Texas. Um, Pocono is a fun track. Iowa I haven't run at yet. Uh, I don't think I've run at Kansas either. So kind of looking at Texas to be the result. I the the track after before the All Star break to uh, to get a good result. But uh, you know I'll take what I can get if I can if I find myself in the spot at any of the other tracks i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure my presence is known for sure well justin thank you for taking the time out of your post race to to talk to me here um congrats on your eighth place finish it wasn't easy but a top 10 finish is a top 10 finish nonetheless and a lot of points gained going in towards the holiday break hey, yeah you gotta take what you can get right thanks ladies not a problem have a good one All right, that concludes all of the interviews we've got for Road America. We'll bring up the results page here. This is the full results from Road America Race 3 of 20. Christian Gomez won by 10.5 seconds over Shane Therrien. Logan Brakey rounded out the podium. Third place for him for Color 2 Motorsports. Bronson Stafford with Sky Motorsports rounding out fourth place. Maintains the points lead as a result. Jared Zeigler rounds out the top five on the lead lap. Trenton jumped the last car on the lead lap in sixth position. Then it's Joey Chapman, Justin Dittrich, who we just talked to, Tom Bourne, and Eric Stamp rounding out the top ten. Kevin Young, Gilberto Javier Gamora at 11th and 12th place. Jacob Grant comes home 13th for High Five Racing. Austin Jordan is 14th. Matt Hummel, 15th. Earlier retirements is where we're getting into now. Joseph Lester in the 44 finishes 16th after being involved in more than one incident in the race this evening. Bennett Allen, 17th. Jason Cameron Jr. in the 18th spot for car number 18. Spencer Hardison in the 9 car out early finishes 19th. And the last place runner, Tanner Johnson. I believe Tanner Johnson was disqualified is what happened there. He finishes 20th. He was 14 laps down. But I believe incident point limit may have gotten him disqualified from this event. 20 starters. Looks like we had 12 finishers 
at the end of this race. Christian Gomez, the fastest of all of them, locks himself in to the next-gen playoffs. Shane Therrien hot on his heels. Logan Brakey with an amazing climb through the points. And Bronson Stafford maintains status quo at the top of the order. That is it for ABN's coverage of the Shake and Bake Next Gen Series. Next week, 8 p.m. Eastern, same time, same day, we come from Nashville, Nashville Super Speedway, for race four of the season. But until next time, for everyone from Shake and Bake for the Next Gen Series and everyone here at ABN, I am Clayton Hardy. Thank you all for tuning in to our coverage here at Road America. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, have fun out there, enjoy your weekend. We'll see you at Nashville.